Yeah, I must be naturally pretty psychotic, I think. I, I can't help myself. Even the attempts at something beautiful like Heavenly Pop Hit, there's some pretty twisted stuff in there as well. So, yeah, it comes naturally. It's a talent. Yeah, so Pink Frost um, was written early 1982. So I would have been about 18. It was a song that really upped my whole game. I mean, there'd be some good ones like Rolling Moon and Kaleidoscope were before that, but this was the first one delivered from beyond, pretty much in its entirety. She's lost. And straight away, I knew the music was special. It would need a lyric to kind of explain the atmosphere. Probably the worst I've ever played it. I still think the lyrics kind of hokey, you know, this guy has accidentally killed his girlfriend in his sleep. And, but then years later I read of the exact the same thing happening in, in the news, so it was sort of a wee bit more serious. A real haunting atmosphere, I ripped off the guitar sound from the cleans, point that thing somewhere else, the real kind of low sort of um, kind of thing. And the two intro bits came about the very next day at band practice, uh, with in both cases Terry Moore just doing a wee kind of twiddly thing and I said, what's that? And so the da -da 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 -da, that was on top of his bass line and the wee uh, climbing thing after that, da -da 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 -da, that was on top of a, I think he actually did a four, four time beat and I said, let's try that in three. We recorded it probably two months later in Auckland and then our drummer Martin Bull got sick and we kind of put the whole recording on hold. We didn't think we'd quite got it. We waited for him to recover he didn't, he died of leukaemia. Um, so we went back in 84 into the studio and realised we were pretty close to having gotten something special. Sometimes it's the ones that come quick that sound like the best riff you've ever had, which turn into the most troublesome songs, but um, not in this case. Uh, it just felt natural. I even remember my mum sort of poking her head into the living room saying, oh, that sounds good. So um, you got your mum's seal of approval, you know you're onto something. Pink Frost was not written about Martin, Martin Bull, our drummer, dying. People kind of assume it, it was because of the atmosphere. And I felt I had to say something. It was not just for me, but for most of our peer group was the first one of us dying, and especially he was a very healthy, healthy, strong person, so it kind of really shocked people. But I didn't want to make a big sort of maudlin, say, Joy Division-like song about it or something. Growing up, as I did listen to Bowie and uh, T-Rex, the sweet, I decided to basically hide the lyrics behind a great big glam rock riff. The thing about this album, like the previous two, is I was intending to do a completely different, more sound experimentation kind of record. There were equipment difficulties and computer difficulties, I never was able to start that process in time. So suddenly realised about three or four months out that I had to start writing songs. And then I suddenly realised that what I'd been through with the movie and the health scare and everything, a lot of people my age group were on Facebook and everywhere talking about similar things. Um, and, and parents dying, and my mother had died. One of the songs was about that. Just mortality became a, a major theme um, throughout the whole, the whole record. It's intentional that, that uh, very few of our songs go past the sort of 340 kind of, kind of thing. I, I find myself getting bored and figure that, that if I am, other people will, will as well. One of the things in chill songs, if there's a riff, it'll more likely happen three times, not four. I just find the fourth one, by that stage you're expecting it, just get rid of it. So it's trimming down, and I did that more so with the lyrics than I've ever done before as well. I write a lot of lyrics, as you'll see, looking at um, the older album, Submarine Bells and Soft Bombs. It's just, just, just lyrics everywhere. This time it seemed better to strip them down so people can go inside them themselves and find what they, what they want. And especially when you're talking about uh, the song Caught My Eye about the death of my mother, it just, I had a lot of personal stuff about her that I just took out. It was better to leave it for people going through something similar. And that's already the response I'm getting, is kind of a thank you for, for that. So 
So I was living in Auckland, started writing on this old 60s keyboard, a New Zealand made keyboard, Jensen, Transonic, beautiful sustain circuit for every single note. So it just chimed, uh, especially through a wonderful old New Zealand made Holden reverb chamber. And the Heavenly Pop riff came about um, while I was writing the Submarine Bells album. We ended up recording it overseas and we were never able to capture that sound. We had to kind of make do with some sort of church organ kind of thing, which is just not quite as good, but it, it obviously worked. It was a special song and it was the, the closest shot we came at sort of mainstream success. In, in America, it started getting played on some of the uh, AOR adult oriented rock stations, which was, everyone was like, yes, it's happening, and then it didn't happen. So <laughs> it was a big moment though, and um, in America in particular, it's still the song we're probably most well known for. It came together reasonably easy. It was a, it's a, a simple but enjoyable song to play. Ollie will explain to you the complexities about this because it's beyond it's beyond me. I'll make some stuff up. Man. You make some stuff up. Got a couple of uh, musicologists in the tour party at the moment, so we had a, a couple of chats around like where it kind of it launches and it propels and then it arrives and then it goes on a kind of a harmonic journey. Because obviously the um, the verses is like a really really classic kind of. Like it's it's the, it's it's something we've heard many 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 times, but the harmonic rhythm is quite different, sort of. It's actually quite classical in some of the progressions, especially when it goes dum dee dum 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 dee dum dum, and then it's which is like the major lift, like the cadence to A minor, but it never goes to A minor, it goes. And very quickly goes back to C on a four, five, one. So it has all these like really, really kind of conventional bits of a pop song crammed in really, really closely to it to each other in a way that kind of delivers it all very, very fast. And then before you know it, you're back at which is a really big relief. So it kind of builds this tension up. Martin's going, what are you talking about? <laughs> it, it sounds to me like you're saying that whoever wrote this must have been some sort of boy genius no, or something. No, I think he just fluked it. <laughs>